Hello, I'm Makery Kate and I am very excited to be working with Sea Salt again to bring you another crafty project. Now this one I think is my favourite one that I've done so far. I can't wait to show you what we're going to learn to make today. It's one of these, cute as can be, seagulls. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? And I've made this using sea salt fabric from old garments that have had better days. So it's also a really, really sustainable project. You don't need too much fabric at all. Of course you could use any fabric, but it's really nice to be upcycling at the same time. So it's not too tricky a project. It's handy if you've got a sewing machine. Obviously it'll take a, you a little bit longer if you are hand sewing, but it's absolutely still doable as a hand sewing project. I think I might hang him up behind us so that he can have a little fly whilst I'm making. There we go, he can keep his beady eye on us whilst I'm showing you what to do. So you will need some fabric. I have got, um, here is the fabric that I've cut up from an old sea salt dress. I've also got some contrasting fabric as well. This fabric is really, really lightweight. So I've also got some medium weight iron-on interfacing. You don't need that if your fabric is um, kind of medium weight fabric anyway. I've just added it for a little bit more stability. You will also need some felt for the beak. I actually couldn't find any felt today, so this is the corner of a fresh duster, which I have cut a rectangle from. You'll need some stuffing, not too much. The patterns, which are on the Sea Salt website that you can download and print off. Some pins, thread, scissors, a needle, and then a sewing machine. And it's also handy to have an iron as well. The first thing that you need to do is cut out the three paper pattern pieces. So there's one paper pattern piece for the body, one for the beak, and then one for the wings. Um, make sure that you cut out the notches on the back of the body as well, because you'll need those for the placement of the wings later on. Then you can lay your fabric out in front of you and take the body piece first. You need to cut out two of these for the body piece. So you need to pin it on or put some pattern weights down and then you can either draw around it or just cut out straight around the pattern piece. So you need two for the body piece. And then you also need to cut out one of the main fabric for the wings. And then you could cut out the underneath of the wings in the same fabric as well, or I think it's quite nice to have a contrasting fabric. The main thing to be concerned about when you're cutting out the wings is that you need to cut on the fold. So I folded this fabric over here. It's a little bit tricky to tell, but there's a fold down this line here. And then, and I'm making sure that the grain of the fabric is nice and straight. So this fold line here is perpendicular to the lines, the grain, the, the strands of thread which are going across this way. Um, and then take your wing pattern piece and place this fold line here on the pattern onto the fold on your fabric like that. So that means when you open out your fabric piece, it'll be one long, double wing span wing piece. So again, you can pin that in place, put some pattern weights, draw around it, whatever you're most comfortable with and cut out around that. Just remember not to cut down the fold line here, that needs to be left intact. And then I've repeated that process for the fabric for the underside of the wings as well. So I've got one large piece of fabric for the underside of the wings, one large piece for the top, and then two <clears throat> pieces of fabric for the body, like so, one and two. So all that's left to do is get the pattern piece for the beak and cut that out from the felt, or well, the duster in this case, which is fine. Um, so I'm just going to pin it on and then carefully cut around so that our seagull has a beak. Okay, so far, so good. Right, so let's start sewing. First of all, if you take your two wing pieces and place them on top of each other with the right sides of the fabric facing. So it's a bit tricky to tell on this um, patterned, lovely patterned fabric, which is the right side. <clears throat> but I've got the right side facing down and the wrong side facing up. So I'm gonna pop those in place and then pin all the way around the outside like so to hold them together 
And then what we're going to do is stitch around the outside edge with a one centimeter seam allowance. So if you're using your sewing machine, just make sure you're checking the seam allowance on the guide on the bottom. And if you're sewing by hand, you can just keep checking that you're a centimeter in from the edge. But what you do need to do is make sure you leave a gap so that you can turn your wings the right side out when you've finished sewing. So I'm going to pop two pins in along this flat bit along the edge here. So it's easier if you sew along a flat bit. Um, so this bit along here, I'm going to put two pins in which are facing the opposite direction. And those pins are about probably seven centimeters apart. And that will just be a sense check for me to make sure that I remember to stop before I got back to where I started. Right, we've stitched around the outside edge of that wing piece. I'm just gonna turn it over so that you can see on this interfaced side. I've left that gap of probably seven or eight centimeters so that we can turn it the right side out. But before we do that, we just need to clip all of the curves and corners. So wherever each of these little indentations are on the bottom, I'm just cutting a little clip where the feathers go in. Um, I just need to be really careful that I don't cut all the way up to my stitching line because um, we don't want the sewing to come undone. But by doing this, it means that when we turn it the right side out, those lovely curves, they won't pucker, but they'll be nice and smooth. And then the other thing that we need to do, once I've done that, is wherever there is a curve going in any direction, we need to just snip a few V shapes out of the fabric. So take your time when you're doing this, you don't need to rush as quickly as I'm doing now, but wherever there are any curves in the fabric, just cut some little V shapes out like this. So I've done it on this curve here, I do it again around this corner and then on each of these curves all the way around until you get to this one here. So there's um, just little V's all the way around the edge of the, the wing shape. And that means that when you turn it the right side out, it will be all lovely and smooth and nice and neat. Then if you take your two body pieces of fabric, and I'm going to lay one of them out in front of me with the right side of fabric facing upwards. And I'm going to take the beak piece of felt now. And at the front, there were two little marks. You place the beak on those two little marks like so, so that the beak piece of felt is facing towards the center of the piece of fabric. You want the short straight edge of the beak to line up with the short straight edge of the fabric like that. And then once you've done that, you can just pop a pin in place to hold it in place. Make sure your pin is like this, well away from the edges of the fabric so that it doesn't get in your way once you are sewing around the edge. So once you've done that, you can pop your other fabric piece on top with the right side facing down. So the right sides of the fabric are facing each other. Line up the edges so that they match nice and neatly. And then you can pin all the way around the outside to hold your two pieces of fabric together. Now this time, so we're gonna do the same as what we did for the wing pieces. Sew around the outside edge with a one centimeter seam allowance. And again, we need to leave a gap so that you can turn your fabric piece the right side out. But this time, you can do that between these two notches that you cut. So you don't necessarily need to pop pins in place to remind you. Okay, there we go, they're pinned together. So we're gonna stitch from here all the way around the outside to this notch here. Right, so I have now also stitched around the outside edge of the body piece and I have, with my scissors, clipped all of those curves and corners as well. And as you can see, that's also done around the outside edge of the wings. So we're ready to turn both of these pieces of fabric the right side out. So you can do that with just using your hands. Careful when you turn the head the right side out because you've got that pin in there with the beak. And just pull that out. But you might also need something like a pen or a knitting needle or the end of a paint makeup brush or a paintbrush or something just to help you push it all the way out um, in the ends and the corners. So I've got a knitting needle here. I'm not gonna push too hard because I don't wanna 
make a hole in the fabric, but just gently tease the fabric out so that you get all of the shape and the nice definition of the outside edge of the seagull. There we go. Oh, look, it's all coming together. Love it. There we go. So that's the body right side out. And I'm going to repeat that process for the wings. Because I interfaced the back of the wings just to make them a little bit stiffer, it's going to be a little bit more tricky to push it the right side out. But what that's going to do is mean that they hold their shape so much better and the wings don't flop down too much when he's hanging like this one. Over here, nice and proudly flying along. <laughs> there we go. So I'll just use the knitting needle again to push it all the way out. And actually, so you can push that all the way out to the tip of the wing, but you can also use the knitting needle um, just to make sure you, you get those curve shapes along the bottom bits of the feathers where it curves in and out as well. Right, so we've got the wing piece and the bird piece both turned right side out. So the next job is to take the stuffing. You need to take really little bits at a time and tease it all open so that you haven't got bits all clumped together and then push them in so that all the way to the end so that you can start stuffing the fabric pieces. You don't want to overstuff them because if you do that, they'll just it kind of will look the shape will start to look a bit weird. Um, so you just need to make sure that they're medium stuffed, I guess. <laughs> um, but again, you can use the knitting needle if you want to, to push the stuffing all the way to the end. It's really, really important that you just use little bits at a time and you tease the stuffing like this. Because if you to put big, big pieces in at once, um, it would be really lumpy and it wouldn't look quite so nice. So if you just carry on until you've got a medium stuffed, um, body piece and wing piece. So the wings and the body piece have now both been stuffed with stuffing. Um, there's still a little bit of give in them, so they're not like stuffed to bursting point, but they're stuffed enough so that when you hold this up, it doesn't flop down either side. So the next job is to sew up the gaps with a needle and thread. So I've got needle and thread here, and you might want to pin the edges together before you start sewing pop a couple of pins in on the wing piece to hold the edges together. So I'm gonna fold the edges in nice and neatly just to continue the same kind of seam that we've got around the rest of the piece of fabric. There we go. So there's a couple of pins holding that together. I'm just gonna take my needle and thread and I'm going to work ladder stitch, which is where you take a piece of fabric from the left hand side and then you move across and take a piece of fabric from the right hand side and keep on working from left to right. And then that means that when you pull your thread nice and tight, it just kind of zips the two edges of the fabric together really neatly. Right, so I've stitched up the hole on the wings with ladder stitch. I'm gonna do exactly the same now with the body, but I want to keep the, um, make sure that I mark those two points. So I'm just gonna pop a pin in. I should still be able to see it, to be honest with you, because my stitching will be slightly different to the stitching that I did before. But I'm just gonna pop a couple of pins in, one here and one there, so that I can remember where those two points are. And then I'll pop a couple of pins in, like I did before, just to hold the two edges together. One there, whoops and another one over here. And then I will take my needle and thread and again, use ladder stitch to sew the two edges together and close the gap. So here we have the finished body piece and here are the wings. There's one more bit of prep that we need to do to the wings before we finally stitch them on to the body. And that is, we need to fold the wings in half, like so. Find that center point. I'm just gonna mark it with a couple of pins. Make sure I've got it right. There we go. And I'm just gonna kind of like um, ease the fabric from that center point to either side. So there's a little bit of a gully down the center. And then I'll pop the pins all the way through. 
what we're going to do is stitch a line. I quite like to do this line of stitching on the sewing machine, but if you don't have one or you prefer not to go through all of this thickness on your sewing machine, that is completely fine. But we're going to do a line of stitching through there, down the middle, just to make that kind of even flappy wing bit down the centre. So once you have stitched that line down the centre of the wings to make them all flappy, or I'll cut that end off, all that's left to do is sew those onto the body. So I've still got the pins in place here from those two notches that we originally made. So I'm going to pop the wings in between the two notches and follow the back seam of the bird along with that seam that we just stitched down the centre of the wings. And I'll pin those in position. It's a little bit tricky through all the layers, but it'll be okay. And then you just want to do a few stitches. Um, so certainly a few stitches at the front and a few stitches at the back. And if you can manage them, a few stitches in the middle as well, just to attach the wings to the body. And then it's done, so cool. I'll quickly do that now and then I'll just show you how we can hang our seagull up so that he can fly around. And there we go, one finished seagull. I just think they're so lovely and look really, really great in your home. Maybe hung by a window so that when the wind comes in, they kind of flap around a little bit. So the final thing that you need to do is to put a loop of thread to hang it by. And you need to do a little bit of trial and error with this because depending on exactly where your stitching is, how much stuffing you've got in there, will depend on exactly where the center point is. So if you kind of put a, um, a stitch through down that center back seam, at one point and then hold it you'll find out oh that's not bad actually I might go very slightly further forward because he's slightly facing upwards but you just want to do it so that when you hang the threads oh no did I do it the wrong way yeah I did <laughs> so slightly further backwards so that um, your seagull isn't flying upwards or downwards oh that's a bit more like it there we go so at that point, I will put the loop through in the thread and just tie the ends together at the top. And then you can hang your seagull in your home. Wouldn't it look nice in like a kiddie's room as well or just in the kitchen? There we go, you could have a little flock. Cool, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this workshop as much as I've enjoyed teaching you. I'd love to see what you get up to. So if you make your own seagulls, please share them online. Don't forget to tag me, the Makery Kate, and Sea Salt as well. Thank you so much. Happy sewing. Goodbye.